Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome back to the Esther Song of Praise channel. I'm so grateful that all of you are here with me. And that's the word that I want to focus on today, gratitude. And I woke up this morning with such a heart full of gratitude, hearing the birds singing, seeing the sunshine outside. Every single day on this earth, whether things go our way or not, is such a gift from God. And I pray that the Lord helps me to be more grateful. You know, a while back I shared with you guys that uh, I was sick and today, you know, I can tell that my body is getting stronger day by day and healing. And I really want to be more intentional about, you know, living a more healthy lifestyle and honoring the Lord with the gifts that he's given me because I don't take for granted that, you know, I am able-bodied, that I do have the power to, you know, move my limbs and just, it's such a blessing to be able to just move freely, live freely. I don't, I don't take those things for granted. And I have such a, an attitude of gratitude <laughs> I know that might sound a little bit cliche, but a lot of the things that I took for granted before, I, even today, I was just thanking the Lord all through the day for what may seem like the little things, but just being able to, you know, move my limbs around freely and breathe, breathe uh, freely. And, you know, the Lord, he gives us the the power to do things. And it's found in him. And I'm so grateful. I am so grateful that I woke up this morning, you know, sound mind, sound body. And while I'm not in perfect health yet, <laughs> that is a journey that I am working towards optimum health. And that's what the Lord wants for each of us, you know. And he wants us to be spiritually healthy as well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into his word. First, a brief prayer. And then we're going to cover the word. And then I'll share a few of my takeaways from this chapter. Chapter 18, we're continuing on in our wisdom series in the book of Proverbs. So let's go ahead and get started. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, and we thank you so much for opening our eyes, for giving us breath in our bodies, Father God. Help us to see your temple as our body. Our body is your temple, Lord. And not to take for granted the fact that we are living souls, Lord. We ask that you would draw near to us as we draw near unto you, Father God. Give us wisdom from your word, Lord. I pray for an, a heart full of gratitude for just all of your blessings, Lord, things that people may take for granted or find simple, a roof over our heads, Lord God, a soft bed to sleep in, a refrigerator full of food. You know, not everyone has those things. And so I'm just, I'm, and bless those who do not, you know, bless anyone who is hurting, who is suffering, Lord God, who you know, maybe in need, Father, you said you would provide all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And we thank you so much, Lord. I'm so grateful that we can come to you and have a relationship with you and to lift up your name, Lord, for you are holy and worthy to be praised. We thank you so much, Father. We ask that you would just continuously draw us closer to you, Father. Fill our hearts with love and joy and peace, Lord God. Fill us with the Holy Spirit, Lord. Order our steps in your word, Lord God. We thank you, Father. We're so grateful for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I'm grateful for all of you too. <laughs> I know this channel may be small, but it's growing steadily and I'm grateful for that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into chapter 18. An unfriendly person pursues selfish ends and against all sound judgment starts quarrels. Fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delight in airing their own opinions. 
When wickedness comes, so does contempt, and with shame comes reproach. The words of the mouth are deep waters, but the fountain of wisdom is a rushing stream. It is not good to be partial to the wicked and so deprive the innocent of justice. The lips of fools bring them strife and their mouths invite a beating. The mouths of fools are their undoing and their lips are a snare to their very lives. The words of a gossip are like choice, choice morsels. They go down to the inmost parts. One who is slack in his work is brother to the one who destroys. The name of the Lord is a fortified tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. The wealth of the rich is their fortified city. They imagine a wall too high to scale. Before a downfall, the heart is haughty, but humility comes before honor. To answer before listening, that is folly and shame. The human spirit can endure in sickness, but a crushed spirit, who can bear? The heart of the discerning acquires knowledge, for the ears of the wise seek it out. A gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. In a lawsuit, the first to speak seems right until someone comes forward and cross-examines. Casting the lot settles disputes and keeps strong opponents apart. A brother wronged is more unyielding than a fortified city. Disputes are like the barred gates of the citadel. From the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. The poor plead for mercy, but the rich answer harshly. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. May the Lord bless the reading of his word today. So a few of my favorite verses are this one right here. The last one, 24, one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And I think that's so important, right? Because the wise walk with the wise. And it's so important to curate your circle of friends because bad, corrupt, bad, what is it, bad? I don't know. If you have people around you that are bad, they'll corrupt your character. I'm paraphrasing, but that's a, a scripture as well. Oh, bad company corrupts good character. That's the scripture. Yes. And that's so true, right? Because, you know, when you're growing up and your parents may try to look out for you and say, you know, they don't necessarily like a few of your friends because they could be a bad influence. That's biblical. And so the Lord really wants us to, you know, have friends that we can count on and depend on and be a friend that people can count on and depend on as well. That's so important. Another one of my favorite scriptures in this chapter is verse 15, where it says, The heart of, of the discerning acquires knowledge, for the eyes, for the ears of the wise seek it out. And again, I love this because, you know, if we ask for wisdom and if we, you know, have a heart that desires knowledge, the Lord will bless us with that. Um, you know, he says, if we ask for wisdom, he'll give it to us liberally. So that's what I'm doing right now, right? Asking the Lord to bless us all with his wisdom in his word and seeking it out. Because again, if we have ears of the wise to seek it out, then the Lord will be gracious and bless us with just those things that we ask for. You know, Jesus said, ask and you shall find, seek 
and it shall be given unto you. Knock and the door shall be opened. And so there's a, a command to us there, right? To do the asking and the seeking and the knocking, okay? Because the Lord is a gentleman. He's not going to force himself on anyone. He's not going to force us to do anything. He loves us so much that he gives us free will. And so my will, and I'm trying to be as intentional as I can every single day, is to seek him out for his wisdom and his guidance and his love. And I'm so grateful that you're on this journey with me. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and I will talk with you later. Take care, brothers and sisters. Bye.